Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto and today guys we are taking another cheeky look at Ripple and uh, you know, specifically the lawsuits and there's a lot of them Chris um, but today we have a bit of a victory. So Chris, um, you know, yet another victory for Ripple with uh, you know the courts uh, rejecting uh, te Tetragon's um, you know appeal, right? And uh, this is fantastic news. We're going to get into this. If you um, find it useful, informative, hit that like button. We both really do appreciate it. And of course, if you're new to the channel and you're not yet subscribed, do consider subscribing. By subscribing, you will be kept up to date with all of the videos and live streams that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. Um, Chris, anything you want to add at this point, or should we jump straight over to the desktop and see what's going on here with uh, Tetragon's uh, appeal, the court rejecting it, and the victory for Ripple? Well, yeah, just one thing. Uh, yeah, I, you know how it is, Nick. I, I read all the messages, and um, I really do want to know, do you think the SEC are going to win, or do you think Ripple are going to win uh, on the, you know, the big lawsuit? Um, really interested to know. Let us know in the comments below. Fantastic. Right, let's jump on down uh, into the desktop and see what's going on here. Let's do it. Absolutely. So yet another victory for Ripple. Court also rejects uh, Tetragon's appeal. Um, so Ripple Labs uh, has scored another victory in its legal battle with Tetragon um, Financial Group Limited. After the court had ruled on March the 5th that Tetragon uh, is not entitled to a stock redemption from Ripple at this point in time, the court uh, of Chancery uh, of the state of Delaware uh, has now also rejected the appeal, which, uh, you know, you'd imagine that they were obviously going to do an appeal because, you know, why not? Um, but obviously, it was no way that was ever going to work. So really interesting, another massive victory for Ripple here. Um, but, you know, the court deemed Tetragon's claim of uh, a securities default to be false, um, as there is no... Uh, uh, there's currently no official ruling on the status of XRP. And I can say that again for, for those people who, who need to act confirming. There is n currently no official ruling on the status of XRP. Now, what's really interesting about that is um, obviously you have different governmental groups, Chris, saying that uh, XRP is a security or XRP is a currency. And it depends uh, which uh, particular government agency you want to pay attention to the most, right? Because uh, they're um, being contradictory at best. But nonetheless, uh, in this particular case, they're rolling, rolling with the fact that there is no um, security status of XRP and therefore Tetragon's claim is absolutely false. Totally agree with that. It is false. And it's the same thing you see with MoneyGram lawsuit going on as well, where people are trying to sue for the hell of it without actually, you know, waiting due course for it to be found to be a security or not to be a security. They're all just, um, I guess, trying their luck, Chris. Didn't you say with that? Yeah. And, and we've talked about this before on the channel, Nick. We, you know, when they initially, you know, sort of made the, the filing, we were like, don't this feel just a little bit too early? Like it hasn't even been deemed a security. And we said that a while back. So, you know, I'm not surprised to, to be getting this news. It's exactly aligned to, to what we were, were talking about back then. Um, so yeah, not surprised. Uh, and I'm not going to be surprised when Ripple be, uh, you know, I say beat, they win um, their lawsuit against uh, the SEC or there's a settlement. I won't be surprised either way. Absolutely. And the same thing for, for MoneyGram, really. Um, it's a load of nonsense. It's a, a basically a MoneyGram money grab um, from from many of these people. They're I just, can see uh, that in lights. You can, you can, <laughs> can't you? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's awful, really. I think it's just um, where there's a blame, there's a claim. And sometimes where there is no blame, people try to make the claim. Um, but nonetheless, uh, we are where we are and it's a load of nonsense. But let's carry on here. Judge Morgan um, therefore denied Tetragon's request for a preliminary injunction um, and lifted the previous imposed injunction restricting the sale of XRP, which was a really interesting one. Um, so basically, you know, Ripple had that imposed upon them so they couldn't make any further sales of XRP. Um, but obviously that's now been revoked, which is fantastic. It's been lifted. And uh, ultimately, you know, they were pretty reasonable towards the uh, la latter end of last year, Chris, with how they were approaching the XRP sales. The majority of it always got locked back up if they did not sell it. And um, yeah, I think they're responsible in the space overall, Chris, um, despite you know, all this kind of FUD that's out there at the moment. 
Yeah, those those fud bots, eh, Nick? Yeah, those fuds. They, they, those fud bots are everywhere these days. But nonetheless, um, let's get into the, this a little bit more. So the UK-based asset management firm owns uh, less than 2% of Ripple's equity. Um, however, it was the largest contributor to a Series C funding round, raising $175 million, and sued Ripple um, to buy back its stocks after the SEC lawsuit, saying it triggered... Uh, the risk of uh, irreparable harm, um, and you know it's just a bit, a bit far fetched to be honest with you. If anyone who was following it, you can see exactly why it didn't work. Um, but ultimately, Tetragons uh, also loses appeal against Ripple, um, as Law Three Hundred and Sixty reported. Um, you know the the Court of Delaware there um, has now also denied Tetragon's request for an appeal um, to the state Supreme Court, and uh, basically the judge here explains in a twelve-page letter ruling that Tetragon failed to show that an appeal of the preliminary injunction uh, involves more than review uh, of a contract interpretation, a category. Um, you know, uh, that the, the court has generally deemed unworthy um, of, uh, yeah, of, of appeal there. So really interesting. Ultimately, like, you know, it's just kind of a bit of nonsense, but it's another win for Ripple, which is, is a, the most important thing to take away here. And Tetragon's application does not identify uh, any particular aspect um, of the court's uh, interpretation uh, that was, you know, uh, uh, you know so I think... Um, yeah, I'll read this into detail, Chris. A much less uh, a specific error on a substantial issue uh, of material importance, um, ultimately. And, and you know, qualifying the decision of the state Supreme Court review before the case is even you know, is decided by summary judgment or trial, um, you know, is, and that's cited in the document there. So I think ultimately, you know, I think Tetragon, amongst a few others, are trying their luck um, in these very early stages, Chris. And uh, for this one, it definitely backfired. I think it'll also backfire on the, on the top law firm that's suing MoneyGram over the XRP stuff as well. I think that's going to backfire. And um, I'm pretty confident uh, that uh, Ripple are going to survive the SEC lawsuit pretty unscathed as well. Um, but as I said before on other videos, in terms of Brad Garlinghouse um, and you know, Chris Larson, they, they may be slightly different cases. They may be, you know, come to a totally different understanding. Um, and, you know, there may have to be a change of leadership at some point with Ripple. But nonetheless, Ripple itself will be absolutely fine, um, as will the XRP uh, token. Um, yeah. And I, I was going to say, we don't tend to focus on the, the you know, the, the lawsuits with, with Chris and, and Brad, just because ultimately we don't see it as impacting the project too significantly, um, because there would be a change of leadership, we feel. Um, obviously we're not, um, you know, legal experts or financial advisors. So take everything that we say with a pinch of salt, it's all just our opinion. Um, but you know, for, for, for us, it, the SEC case just looks weak. It has from the start. Um, we've seen obviously, you know, other projects, um, that have been found guilty, continue to, to see tremendous gains. And um, we've talked about this, uh, on the channel several times, so we're not going to go into, to any detail on that for, for this video, but you know, for, for me, you know, we're still in profit in our portfolio. We increased our positions since, um, the SEC filed their lawsuit and we're very much, um, I guess in a position where we're really comfortable with everything that's happened so far and, you know, to, to still be in profits remarkable. Yeah, absolutely. It's one of those things where, um, you know, we were fortunate enough to be invested in XRP, uh, in the earlier days. And, uh, even when it had its nice correction, uh, or crash, I should say really when the SEC lawsuit came out, painful to see a, a very large number wiped off of our ledger. Um, but nonetheless, um, a fantastic opportunity to be purchasing up some of that fear that was available. And uh, we did just that, and we extended our position within XRP, and our portfolio is looking much healthier for it. Not, um, you know, to say that there's an immediate reaction to, uh, you know, the current price and things like that. We still think this thing is going to have significant value added to it in the long term, and therefore we are still holding long with XRP. And specifically, to, to kind of quote... Brad Garninghouse, I'm super long XRP, Chris. Are you super long XRP? I'm beyond super long for XRP. I'm willing to, you know, I'm willing to go down with the ship. Um, that's how strongly I feel that the use case um, 
you know Ripple and XRP has, I guess, to to an extent. Um, you know, I, I'm willing to to sacrifice um, my financial position um, in XRP if I'm wrong. Um, so everybody's got to to do their own research. They've got to make decisions with their big boy pants on or big girl pants on. Um, you know, it's really important, and I I do feel the you know, if you, you look at the use case and look at the need with the current landscape, um, you know, the financial landscape I'm talking about, you know, with everything that the, the rotten virus has sort of impacted with people having to work from home, people losing their jobs, the endless amounts of money being printed. Um, and, you know, I, I, I look across the, the waters and, you know, I see banks with dormant cash sat in them unable to 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 be used and utilized in a time where it probably needs to be um so for me um you know an educated uh guess is is sort of my position on it but you know i'm really comfortable with it yeah absolutely so hopefully guys you found this uh, video useful informative if you did hit the like button we both really do appreciate it and of course if you're new to the channel and you're not yet subscribed do consider subscribing by subscribing you'll be kept up to date with all of the videos and live streams that we do here at cheeky crypto and with all this said and done we hope everyone has a fantastic day and we'll catch you all in the next one yeah take care